Hi, I'm John Porter here with the Best of the West. This week, we're going back into the high country of Wyoming. We're gonna take the horses, we're gonna hunt a mountain goat and a moose with two different guys, the guide life in Wyoming. I was so fortunate to grow up in a family that my dad and my uncle were outfitters for decades clear back into the 60s and they guided for their uncle before that clear back as early as about 1950 right here in the Rocky Mountains of Wyoming. The older I get the more blessed I feel to be able to do this and to get out there and hunt these animals which are just such an awesome animal out in this country. Having been guiding hunters each fall for the past 30 years, John has been on some incredible hunts and met some great people. The outfitter's life is both a blessing and a curse. It's finding the perfect animal in the wrong place on the last day of the season. It's laughing at the good shots nice job, man. <laughs> and smiling at the bad ones. The life of a guide is preparing for the worst and expecting the worst. It's hiking up to your secret spot to find someone's already there. It's about working for the signature on the front of a tag, not for one on the back of a check. A guide's life is coming up with the perfect plan for the morning and then getting snowed in during the night. It's about making time to guide those closest to you. That's a guide's life. So the place that I operate out of a pretty good portion of the year when I'm not packed back in, way back into some of these areas, is a cabin that my father built back in the 70s. That cabin is located where sheep areas one and two, right on the boundary of those two, so I can go either way. Elk areas 51, 53, 54, deer areas 105, 106, 109. It's all within a few miles of those, so uh, very centrally located to where we can hunt, you know, goat and moose and sheep and elk and deer and whichever way we want to go and come back every night, get out of the wind, get in and get, get a good night's sleep, a good hot meal, and get up and go again the next day and grab some fresh horses and keep mashing some country to hunt the big ones. My name's Robert Kogar. I was lucky enough this year to pull my 2017 Mountain Goat Tag. I've been hunting since I've been probably eight years old. A lot of whitetail, black bear, antelope, mule deer, elk. Mountain Goat was just something I wanted to put in for just to, I mean, it's a special, a special hunt. You can't imagine just getting a tag. It's like, uh, it's like winning a lottery. Only four years of putting in for the draw to get this tag, which was pretty well amazing because there's no point system here on it. It's just the luck of a lottery draw to get them. And there's a very few limited tags for, for the mountain goat here in Wyoming. Mountain goat hunting is oftentimes comes down to not finding a big billy or not finding a good mountain goat, but it's finding one that you can get to and safely recover. Many times goat hunting in the past, both back when I was guiding a lot in Alaska as well as in Wyoming, if you see a mountain goat that you want, I've spent three or four days before waiting for them to get in a good spot to recover them and not happen. So finding one that's recoverable was kind of one of the keys. Only a few hours into the morning hunt, John and Robert spot a herd of goats feeding up a steep canyon. Too far away to distinguish size or sex, it's time to gain some altitude and see if there's a shooter in the group. When the best of the West continues, Robert gets his sights set on a Wyoming mountain goat. Right here on your Long Range Hunting Authority. The best of the West is brought to you by Coraline Sporting Goods, the Wild Sheep Foundation, Cryptech Camo, the best of the West shooting systems, Defiance Custom Actions, Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable, Huskama Optics Canada, and LongRangeStore.com.
Well, we're sitting here about 540 yards from a bunch of goats. One pretty decent billy in there. Trying to size him up, but all he's done in the last hour is stood up, turned around real quick, and laid back down. So not cooperating very well. Judging the size and trophy quality of a mountain goat is one of the most challenging species in all of North America to determine, especially from across a canyon. Over the years, John has come to rely on Huskama Optics' patented Hunt Smart reticle to effectively field judge animals near or far. So, we got a little Billy up there. Never could get a good look at him. Finally, when he got up, I was doing some measuring on him and a good billy in this country is 48 inches from the end of his butt to the middle of his neck. That one was six minutes at 530 yards, so he ain't but about 36 inches from the end of his butt. So the proportions of the horn and the head and all that look quite similar, but he's just a smallerish one, so we let him go. We're gonna go look for some more. Find another one, I guess. We ended up fourth day in, find another group of them. We put well in over 80, 80, 90 miles on horseback. The hikes going in are pretty extreme. Several miles of timber we had to get through with blowdowns that were just so thick with snags. There was no just easing your way through. It was climbing, trying to bust through stuff just to get up in it. Once we got to a higher vantage point, we seen that they'd moved into some uh, scrub brush off to the one side and was bedded. We just proceeded on. Once you got above timber line, it was just dangerous. I mean. Dangerous to the point to where, as far as sliding, there's no stopping once you start moving. If you start to slip, you're going down. It starts getting a little hairy when you've got a two or 300 foot drop and you're 20 yards from it trying to get across the slide. If something does go wrong, it's gonna go wrong bad and it's gonna go wrong fast. There was roughly an hour between that time to when we seen them again, hour and a half and they got up and moved. With a long range capability, I always try to stay, I like to be across where I can see everything that's going on. A lot of guys, you know, you try to get into 100 or 200 yards where they got more target to shoot at, but what you're giving up when you do that is you get in there and number one, things are gonna happen much faster. Number two, your hunter is much more excited. Number three, because it's happening faster, you don't have a time as a guide to take your guide hat off and put your shooting coach hat on, which is where most guides fail miserably, I believe, is because they're excited too, that's why they hunt. But if you're really gonna be a shooting coach in that situation, what you really need to do is you need to be just like the duck Okay. You need to be really calm on the surface, keeping your hunter calm, but you can be giving her underneath. With two good mountain goats located and separating from the herd, the only thing left now is for one of them to stop and for John to make an accurate wind call on the 415 yard shot. Huskamaw system, you can dial right to that yardage because it's proven data, it's a turret that's made specifically for that gun and that load 
you range in an object and you can dial that turret and hold right on. So then comes in the wind compensation. So if you're shooting in the wind, we've always had two variables in wind. What's the wind doing out there? What's it really worth? And how much are we holding for wind? With the Huskama system, if you dial to say 700 yards and right above that is a number three for three minutes of angle, that's a 10 mile per hour wind chart. Those windage numbers are a 10 mile per hour wind chart. So if it tells you you need three minutes for 10 mile an hour wind and you think you have a 10 mile an hour wind in practice, you hold three minutes and the minute you shoot, the impact of that bullet will tell you, oh, that wasn't a 10 mile an hour wind, that was more like an eight mile an hour wind. And that helps you learn how to read the wind. Talk to Robert there, get the scope set, set the turret for the distance. A lot of squirrely winds in there, but we sat down there and Robert made a really good shot on that goat. Nice. Pan back to you. Come out the waterfall. Nice. He's down. A good shot, buddy. When the shot rang and it dropped, when it started to roll, that's when, yeah, I did get nervous. It, it started down, and I thought when it hit that chute and would hit that, that stream it was in, it was going to shoot right on down. I mean, and he did make probably, oh, an 80-foot fall before the, he got hung up in the creek there. Nice. He's down. Good shot, but that 437 yards is the longest 437 yards you got to cover to get back to him. Uh, it took us around two hours to cover that distance. It's an experience. I mean, it's something that nobody, you can't explain it. You'd have to be there. It's a lot of effort, a lot of effort to even get to where they're at. Pretty rugged country in here. We ran around and saw I don't know what, 20 some goats yeah. all yeah. totaled and uh, this area they're running a lot of tags in here and uh, the only billies we found was some, some younger billies and uh, but man you finally catch up with one and, and you made an awesome shot on buddy. Yeah, he, he dropped. Yeah. What do you think of shooting that seven with that suppressor on it? It was nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty handy. Dial it, shoot it. Nice and easy to watch a shot hit. You said you got to watch a yep. shot hit there, no problem, huh? Yep, I'd seen the impact. So what do you think of this country? It's rugged. <laughs> it's Robin's fault, she's the one that spotted them. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty fun day, huh? Yeah. Pretty fun. Good day. Awesome day. Yep. Good job, buddy. Good <laughs> shot, man. Love it. After the break, we join Steve Vicks on his Wyoming moose hunt. Keep it here on the Best of the West. The Best of the West is brought to you by the Wild Sheep Foundation, Gunbroker.com, Cryptech Camo, The Best of the West Shooting Systems, Defiance Custom Actions, Hornady, Accurate, Deadly, Dependable. Huskama Optics and LongRangeStore.com. For information about hunting with Morning Creek Outfitters, please contact John at 307-587-5343 or by email at jport06 at hotmail.com. For more information about the products and gear used on today's show, please visit LongRangeStore.com or call 1-866-754-7618. My name's Steve Vicks. I'm uh, from a small town in Upper Peninsula, Michigan, Newberry, Michigan, where I work as an emergency room physician out here hunting big game with John Porter. Been coming out here about 20 years. Used to come out here, visit with some dear friends and hunt big game. I work in a small town emergency room in Newberry, Michigan, up in the Upper Peninsula. And in those small towns, you never know what's coming through the door. One moment, 
somebody could come through with a rash or, gosh, the next moment major trauma could come in in the back of a pickup truck. You never know what to expect. That's one of the coolest things about working in a small town emergency room. It's also one of the scariest things. It's kind of like hunting out here. You never know what to expect. You might hunt for 10 days straight and not get what you're looking for. Or you might go out on the first day and turn the corner and right there it is. When I do come out here hunting, I don't bring a lot of medical equipment. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, not a whole lot of emergency procedures you can do on the side of a mountain. But I always do bring a little bit of basic gear. Tend, tend to bring something like an EpiPen. An EpiPen is something that could save a life and it's something where you could make a difference. A couple injections of Benadryl just in case. I bring a tourniquet and some dressings and some anything to stop the bleeding. but. Above and beyond that, I don't think a lot more of that's necessary on a, on a rugged mountain trip. So I just bring the basics, something I can carry in my backpack, but it's always something that can make a difference. Just a few days ago, we're out on the goat hunt and we spot some pretty good moose. In fact, it's the best moose that I've seen in this particular area this fall. We're going to find this moose. So we got the horses in the trailer. Good. And we're driving maybe 20 minutes from the cabin there, and we're driving down the road. And pull over and stop, and Robin says, there's a moose. And then she gets out and walks up in front of the truck a little bit, and she said, hey, there's pretty good bull here. You better come look at it. He's like really close to what the other one was. It was another 10 miles up the creek, and the old bird in the hand, right? What are we supposed to do? Hey, Doc, you better get your gun. So. <laughs> we are doing the Chinese fire drill, it seemed like, but we get out and we get down off the road and, and, uh, and this moose is just like right there. Just hand the gun to him. Yep, I'm good. He shoots this moose and it pushes forward. Um, actually, that Hornady bullet did a wonderful job on that, as it turns out. But so then we just were like, well, that was that. So we get back in the truck and we drive on up to where we can get the truck off the road because it's kind of a narrow little track in there. And so we get off the road and unload the horses and go down in there and tie the horses all around because it's kind of thick stuff in there and a lot of grizzlies travel that bottom so we kind of scatter the horses out around us. So one night we were looking through some old hunting photo albums and noticed on a on a moose hunt and an elk hunt and a caribou hunt, even an antelope hunt that since I wait till the end of the season, usually uh, we're down to the bottom of the bucket with the hunting gear. So the end of the season, I'm usually down to my ugliest, dirtiest clothing. And we noticed that in every successful deer picture or every successful hunting picture, I was always wearing the same shirt, this grubby old green white shirt that isn't even camouflaged, but it was all that was left at the end of the season. And I'm not real big on superstition, but come to be that since that shirt was in every successful hunting picture, I start wearing that at the beginning of the hunt now. And obviously this year, again, it paid off. So I'm wearing this dirty old grubby hunting shirt and until it wears out, can't wear it no more. So we had a wonderful year this year. Got to hunt sheep and deer and elk and mountain goats and moose and just run all over a whole bunch of different areas with their horses. Camped out in some good weather, camped out in some bad weather, rode around in snow and sunshine, and just another year in the guide's life. So we'll see you next time here on The Best of the West.